Well, hello, and welcome to my latest video. Many of you may know that I've signed up to do Le Jork, Land's End to John O'Groats, one of the iconic cycling rides, certainly in Britain. It's about 850 miles, something like that, from the furthest southwest tip of Britain, which is Land's End, to the furthest north east tip of Britain, which is John O'Groats in Scotland. But I thought I'd do a few reasons for you as to why I'm not doing Land's End to John O'Groats, which may come as a bit of a surprise to you. But the first reason is I'm not doing it for charity. Now, I know a lot of people do this ride for charity, and I have nothing but admiration for people who do things like this and raise a lot of money for charity. But, 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 there's something that really annoys me about it. Because I'm doing Land's End to John O'Groats because I want to. So why should you, good viewers, send money to my chosen charity? Because I'm doing something that I want to do. I mean, that to me, it, it just doesn't make sense. It would make sense to me if I was raising money by doing something that I didn't want to do. Now, for example, I have no desire to be a traffic warden. Nothing against traffic wardens. I'm sure they do a fine job, but it's not something that I ever dreamt of doing as a child and I don't particularly want to do it. So if you said to me, look, Julian, work as a traffic warden for a week and we'll give 100 quid to your favourite charity. That to me, that sounds, yeah, that sounds like a thing to me. Or I've never voted Tory. I will never vote Tory. I can't think of any circumstances in my life or in yours that would cause me to vote Tory. But if you said to me, Julian, I'll give you a thousand pounds or I'll, to be precise, I'll donate a thousand pounds to the charity of your choice if in the next general election you vote Tory. Now that, that it would break my fucking heart to vote Tory. Is thousand pounds to fly off a decent charity a price worth paying? I don't know. I suppose it might be. Why don't you make the offer and see? Of course, you'll never know whether I actually went through with it, except, of course, if I gave you my word as a gentleman, then you'd know. Another job I never fancied doing, I don't want to be a butler to Prince Andrew. Can you imagine being a butler to an entitled member, one of the least of the very least royals, Prince Andrew, a man who has had let's face it, his share of problems in his past, and they haven't quite gone away. So if you said to me, Julian, for a week, and a week, by the way, is 24 hours a day for seven days, you are going to be a butler to Prince Andrew at his beck and call, ready to fulfil his every whim, and in return we will pay a thousand pounds to your chosen charity, then I would have a difficult decision to make. So... Doing stuff for charity that you want to do is not, in my mind, a good enough reason. But, but, if you want to donate money, because I'm riding for Land's End to John O'Groats, there's a few charities that I quite favour. First, of course, is the food bank, the Vine Food Bank, which, as you know, this channel raises money for. Secondly, my best friend, her daughter died when she was 16 of heart failure. And there is a charity which is CRY, which stands for Cardiac Risk in the Young. Now, it often comes up about heart problems in relatively young people. You'll recall the story of Christian Eriksson of Denmark during the last European Championship. So if you want to raise money because I'm doing Le Jog, CRY is a pretty good place to send your money. Another good place is Combat Stress, an organisation that my wife has done some work for because people from the armed forces, they often struggle 
after they've left the armed forces, often while they're in the armed forces because they don't get the support that they need, they often start tr struggle with mental health and alcohol and other problems and combat stress helps support them. So there are three different charities there and I'll give you a link in the video at the bottom of this and if you want to send money to them because of that then I think they're a pretty worthy cause. Another reason that I'm not doing Le Jog is because it's not on my bucket list. I don't have a bucket list. And if I did have a bucket list, Le Jog, if I'm honest, would never be, would not be near the top of that list. The main reason, I suppose, is I don't know anyone who's done it where the weather hasn't been appalling for at least a half or nine tenths of the journey. And riding uh, 850, 900 miles through Britain in appalling weather, well, you can do that any weekend you want to. Just add nine of them together and there you are, you've done it. So, bucket list, I don't have a bucket list, but if I had a bucket list, the jog would not be on top of it. I'm also not doing it to find myself. I'm 65 now, I found myself a few years ago. Did I like what I found? It was all right. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not great. I've got quite a lot of faults. I, I try to be fairly nice to people. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. People often think I'm pretty sarcastic and I take the piss a lot and I moan all the time. And yes, those things are true. But it's, all, it's usually done from a place of love in my heart. So I try and be nice to people. I try and live a good life. You can be the judge of whether it's succeeded or not. So I don't need to find myself riding Le Jog. It's 850 miles over nine days. Yeah, it's fairly hard. I don't particularly think it's going to be difficult. I don't think it's going to be beyond my capability. I may be biting off more than I can chew, but I don't need to find myself. I've found myself and by and large, I like what I see. And similar to that, I'm not, I'm not doing the job because I'm, I want the challenge. I'm not trying to, to push the boundaries. I saw that in an advert somewhere. I'm not trying, I'm not trying to go further. I'm not, I'm not trying to uh, stretch myself. I mean, it's a hundred miles a day for nine days. I mean, how hard can that be? You know, I'm a reasonably fit cyclist. I'm a reasonably competent cyclist. I've done quite a few long rides. Yeah, you get a bit of a sore ass out of it. Yeah, you get sore legs out of it. Yeah, it's tiring. Yeah, you'll probably go a bit slow up the hills. But do I think I'm not going to achieve it? No. Do I think I won't manage it? No. Do I think I'm going to give up halfway? No. Sin of hubris, by the way, is one of my other great faults. So do I need that particular challenge in my life? No, I don't think so. Challenge would be being a butler to Prince Andrew for a week. Challenge would be a speechwriter for Michael Gove. Challenge would be trying to find something good to say about this, this current Tory government. I mean, that would be a challenge. That would be an opportunity to push the boundaries. And I'm not even sure I could do it. So going back to the charity thing, if you want to give me some money and have a crack at that, OK. I'll do it. I'm not doing it to escape from it all. Why, why do I need to escape? I have, I have a nice life. I have a lovely wife who loves me. I have two fabulous children who I would give the earth for, and I hope they know that. Well, I think they know that. I kind of enjoy what I do. I, I do a bit of work now. It's. It's, I'm not tied to a full-time job. I used to have a pretty stressful full-time job. Yeah, I know it wasn't down the mines. It wasn't being, you know, Gareth Bale. It wasn't being Michael Gove. You know, it wasn't that stressful a job, but it was stressful to me. But I don't do that anymore. Now I'm, I'm kind of retired and I kind of work part-time. So I have a bit of money coming in. I'm not poor. I'm not short of food, I have shelter, I have a roof over my head, I have some nice friends and I have a wonderful family. So, you know, what else do you need? Do I need to escape from that? Mm. Well, sometimes, yeah. Do they need to escape from me? Yeah, quite often, yeah. But do I need to escape from it all? No. Nah. I suppose you could say 
I'm sort of doing it to discover Britain. In the last couple of weeks, I've been to two places in Britain that I've not been to before. Uh, one is Malvern in uh, kind of Worcestershire, around the Malvern Hills. There's a video about it. You may see a link to it somewhere. And the other place is Derbyshire. I was staying at my friend Kirsten's house in Belper, which is in Derbyshire. And I've done videos about both of those trips. And they were different places for me in this great country, despite everything. England, Britain, United Kingdom, it's still a great country. So am I doing the jog to discover Britain? Well, yes and no. I'll be riding through it. Yes, the weather will probably be shit. I'll probably be looking down at the road and avoiding BMWs and potholes and puddles and God knows what else. So I'll hope to see something in the countryside. I'll hope to appreciate some of the places that I travel through, but I'm, not, I'm sort of doing it to discover Britain. So all of those are reasons why I'm not doing Land's End to Jog and Grote. So you're going to say, if you stuck with me this far, you're going to say, well, come on, Julian, why the hell are you doing it? Well, my mate Ian, who I met on a couple of Marmot tours, great company, by the way, Marmot tours, and they could do with your support at the moment if you're looking for a cycling tour in Europe. Uh, I'd met Ian, we'd done a couple of trips. We had one book for this year. We couldn't go ahead because of COVID. He said to me, do you fancy, oh, I said to him, mother, do you fancy doing something else? And he said, yeah, I want to do the jog. I've done it before and I want to do it again. And I thought, yeah, okay. And he signed up, so I signed up. So why am I doing the jog? I guess at the end of the day, I'm doing it because Ian asked me. Um, am I looking forward to it? Hell yeah. Do I think I'll manage it? Well, hell, hell yeah, yeah. Um, the, I suppose the, the two things that concern me, which is you know, sort of related to the cycling, but, but yeah, it is related to the cycling. One, if, if I get a bad knee or a bad leg or, or some kind of injury, or if I get a saddle sore, a really bad saddle sore, you know, like a... A saddle saw the size of a butternut squash in your groin, so you can't sit on the saddle anymore. I mean, I, you know, um, a, a saddle saw the size of a motorhome. I'm, I'm talking about, you know, something, something gourd-like, something, something pineapple or cactus-like, something with spines that dig into your perineum and your bollocks every time you try and turn the pedal. See, I'm a little bit concerned about that. Not because I'm very prone to saddle sores, because as, in, as it happens, touch wood, uh, I'm not. But those are the only issues. But all the other reasons, nah, nah, I'm not doing it for that. Charity, if you want to give me some money for, not me, I keep on saying me, if you want to give some money to charity because I'm doing the jog, yeah, please do it. But that ain't why I'm doing it. I'm doing it because I want to do it and because Ian asked me. So, follow my journey. Thanks for watching. See you next time.